I'm Dominic Power. I'm a consultant in peripheral nerve surgery based in Birmingham in the UK. And this is the first of a series of talks entitled Brachial Plexus Injuries, Current Concepts in Management. There are a number of topics to be covered in this series, notably the first lecture, which is about anatomy, pathomechanics of injury, and classification of brachial plexus injury. Then there's a separate talk on the classification of nerve injuries, another talk on the clinical assessment of nerve injuries, and one on investigations. And then there are a series of talks on the reconstructive ladder in peripheral nerve surgery, timing of intervention, and nerve reconstructive strategies, including nerve transfer surgery. So the brachial plexus is a series of nerves extending from the cervical spinal cord, the C5 to T1 nerve roots, that then form a network of nerves in the posterior triangle, behind the clavicle, across the front of the shoulder, and into the arm. The terminal branches of the brachial plexus are the peripheral nerves supplying all of the muscles and the functions within the upper limb. So this first talk is about brachial plexus injury, the anatomy, the pathomechanics of injury, and the injury classification. It's important to understand this network of nerves and the typical anatomy. So C5 and 6 form the upper trunk, and this will give function predominantly to the shoulder, with the dorsal scapular nerve from C5 to the rhomboids and levator scapulae, the suprascapular nerve, which will give innovation to supraspinatus and infraspinatus for shoulder abduction and external rotation, and the posterior division of C5, which goes on to form with the rest of the C7 and C8-T1 posterior divisions, the posterior cord. The C5 part of this posterior cord goes on to produce the auxiliary nerve supplying deltoid and also teres minor. The rest of the C5-6 continuation uh, is going to form the muscular cutaneous nerve, the biceps function, and the lateral head of the median nerve, which is predominantly sensory. There is some C7 innervation that comes up into the lateral cord and then back down through the lateral head of the median nerve, supplying some FDS function. The lower trunk, C8-T1, also has autonomic outflow coming from T1 with sympathetic fibres that will form the autonomic innervation to the upper limb. So injuries at this level can be associated with autonomic dysfunction to the head and neck, the so-called Horner syndrome. C8-T1 give innervation posteriorly, so this uh, provides posterior cord innervation of triceps, also of wrist and finger extension. But the main continuation of C8-T1 will produce the ulnar nerve giving ulna hand intrinsics an FDP function to the ulna side of the hand, and also the medial head of the median nerve, which is carrying fibres for the anti-interosseous nerve function, FDP, to the radial side of the hand, and also the median innervated hand intrinsics. An understanding of this anatomy is very important. The roots are in the posterior triangle, forming the upper trunks. The divisions are occurring behind the clavicle, and the cords are named in their relation to the axillary artery. So when we look at this progression of nerves, in the posterior triangle, the roots and injuries to the roots will manifest with a radicular pattern of injury, almost like someone has an injury to a cervical spinal root from a disc. The cords will give uh, an injury pattern which is more clearly defined to either the lateral cord, the posterior cord, or the medial cord. And once we get into the terminal branch injuries, which are injuries occurring in the distal part of the axilla and the upper arm, these injuries manifest more in keeping with a peripheral nerve pattern of injury. Now the supraclavicular type of injury is usually caused by traction, the depression of the shoulder, and at the same time the neck and the head forced towards the contralateral side. And this produces a traction force across the upper trunk predominantly and may result in disruption of the rootlets where they attach to the spinal cord resulting in 
the avulsion injury. Now in a severe avulsion injury you can see here all the ventral and dorsal roots and the dorsal root ganglia which are avulsed from all five of the main contributory roots to the brachial plexus. We have to understand the level of injury in the supraclavicular lesion. Injuries that occur medial to the dorsal root ganglion are termed preganglionic injuries and these are the avulsion injuries from the spinal cord. Injuries that are of the cervical spinal root or further lateral in the upper trunk are ruptures and these are lateral to the dorsal root ganglion and these are effectively treatable in terms of repair or grafting like any peripheral nerve injury. Injuries that occur below the clavicle tend to be associated with fractures and dislocations around the shoulder girdle, fractures of the humeral neck, fractures of the scapula and fractures of the acromion process. Now when we classify brachial plexus injuries there are a number of ways that we can look at the injury. We can look at age, so for instance the obstetric brachial plexus injury or the adult traumatic brachial plexus injury. We can talk about the pathology, whether it's an open injury, whether it's a closed traction injury, whether it's tumour, radiation. Mm. We can also talk about the anatomy, whether it's above or below the clavicle, whether it's the upper trunk or the lower trunk predominantly involved, and whether it's pre or post ganglionic. But the best way is trying to come up with a combination classification system, and the Lefer classification is probably the best known. Lefer described the type 1 open injury, these need emergency surgical exploration and repair, and in a clean cut laceration may be repairable without nerve grafts. The type 2 is a closed injury, which is a traction injury, which can be either supraclavicular or infraclavicular. And within these, the supraclavicular can be pre or post ganglionic. And different nerve roots may be involved in different ways. The type 3 injury is a radiation fibrosis injury. And the type 4 is the obstetric. Type 4A is the herbs palsy with poor shoulder function from C5-6 injury. And the 4B, a clump key, a rarer palsy associated with isolated injury to the lower trunk C8-T1 resulting a, in a poor hand function but a good shoulder function, and a 4C which is a mixed injury. So that concludes our initial first phase brachial plexus current concepts, talking about anatomy, pathomechanics and classification. There will be a further lecture on nerve injury classification and the other topics as discussed earlier. Thanks for listening.